As the 2023 football season winds down, the transfer portal is heating up. AB, who are Florida State's kind of biggest options in terms of quarterback? Yeah, so I, as you said, we're going to focus on the quarterback position tonight, um, today. And we're going to take, it to take a look at two guys that Brendan has kind of described as 1A and 1B. Um, you can find that information on the Knowles 24-7 message boards uh please be sure to get subscribed if you're not i think they're running like a 60 percent deal right now um so yeah so th there's two guys that they're supremely focused on a couple of dudes kind of down the board a little bit but i think they want to let things work out with these guys first and that would be 1a uh um, cam ward and then 1b dj i'm not gonna pretend that we i can. <laughs> there you go you're the one that can say it better than me yeah. um so Ward played at Washington State. He was a transfer from – he was at uh, Incarnate Ward, correct? That sounds I'm pretty right. sure. Yeah, pretty sure he was <laughs> – I mean, that's where Bless Harris was from. So Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was at – no, Bless Harris was at Lamar. I'm Lamar. pretty sure that Cam Ward came from – went from Incarnate Ward out to Washington State. Had a nice season this year. And then DJ obviously was at Clemson and then made his way out to Oregon State and made them a contender. Um, so – we're going to start with uh, we're going to start with Cam Ward, right? Yeah. So Cam Ward seems to be kind of the hotter name on the market in terms of you know national interest. I, I mm -hmm. think that he kind of is a, is a pretty dynamic quarterback. So we'll, we'll watch him on on tape. They're they're an air raid team, so kind of a different feel than what Mike Norvell and staff are trying to do with what the, their their offense. So we'll kind of see. And we've got some like offensive cut up only, correct? Yeah, so this is this is every throw and run by Cam Ward in, in this game against Oregon State. Nice. Um, so well, they're competing against one another. Yeah, it's the Cam Ward versus DJ show. I, I think that's what everybody else in the field thought too. All right, a little quarterback run game to start. Yeah, you just see the smooth athleticism. Mm -hmm. no, nothing crazy here, but someone that you feel comfortable using in the run game. Twelve yards, easy. You can see here early on, uh, well, you know, you'll take that. <laughs> uh, but early on, Oregon State's, you know, playing some variation of cover four here with these two safeties. They're they're not really concerned with the quarterback run game like you just saw. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe this is some kind of Mills concept. But he shows off his arm here. So he, uh, let's see, this year he was... A 66% passer, uh, 3,700 yards, 25 touchdowns and seven interceptions, was sacked 39 times. He rushed the ball 120 times for 144 yards and eight touchdowns. So 39 sacks would tell me that he lost quite a bit of yard, quite a bit of sack yardage. I don't know how many of that gets cooked into the carries um, number that's there, but to rush the ball eight, for eight touchdowns is impressive. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that his legs are undeniable. I, I would assume that a lot of those sack numbers come from him trying to make something happen in the pocket, yeah. um, maybe holding on the ball too long. Maybe, maybe we'll mm -hmm. see that as, as this game progresses. Um, yeah. He wasn't asked to throw the ball deep really much at all. Uh, 121st in terms of percentage of passes, over 20 yards. He seems to have the arm for it, but we'll kind of no. see. It's not exactly a staple of the uh, air raid offense. Right. It might be more of an offensive limitation than kind of who he is, uh, but that guy was was really open. So ball seems to come out in rhythm, though. I mean, there's wow. a good slot feed. I mean, you know, that's an idea of what you would see in a Mike Norvell offense. Yeah. So we're just trying to hit this one on one matchup here. It's a good ball. Yeah. Very good yeah. ball. It's got a little zip on it. It's it's could have been a little of, bit a little bit more outside. Yeah, it, it's the arm fall, or the arm talent seems to be there. I mean, yeah. I mean, the the question is how how consistent can he be in these down downfield passes? Mm -hmm. um, that ball you'd probably like to see a little bit more outside to the sideline. It kind of brings him back into the safety and into the corner. And like I wouldn't call that an accurate ball. Yeah, that that was a great catch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Runs yeah, the RPO this, game well here, obviously. Yep. So this is just a simple read. He sees this guy hesitating. He's going to take the easy completion. So I think that uh, 
the thing that I like about him, and we'll compare and contrast he and DJ, I, I like his motion. I think the ball comes out on time. He's kind of a wristy thrower. Uh, he, yeah, it's very short. Mike, the old Mike Vick wrist, wrist snap there, which some people would tell you leads to inaccuracy, but we haven't seen that at this point. I mean, he's, I'm actually kind of surprised at how much zip he gets on this ball. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know how, how far he could throw it in total, but he, he gets a, he gets pretty good zip on it. Yeah. I'll, I'll agree with you. It's very short stoppy, like turning a double play kind of gets his hips around real quick and has a quick he, little, he kind of reminds me of Russell Wilson. Interesting. Like kind of stocky, but like thicker, um, good, not great arm. Very, very, ryth- very rhythmic. All right, here's here's going to be a rushing touchdown. The old tush push. <laughs> well, FSU fans were were just clamoring for that, so maybe well, that was impressive. I'll I'll give them that. Yeah, that was a nice nice little tush push. It's like a two yard tush push. All right, I don't think we need replays of the tush push. No. All right. Sequence. So, so I think what someone like Cam Ward would do for you is, you know, you, you're going to have, yeah. you're going to have some turnover on the offensive line. Mm-hmm. Um, he's someone more like Jordan Travis that has the kind of in pocket agility to, to, to get out of trouble. I would say, from what I've seen thus far, I think he might read the read, read the field better than Jordan did. Yeah, and and that's also a product of being in, in an offense that that kind right. of emphasizes it but yeah. uh yeah i mean this is kind of what he does he throws off platform he kind of has different arm actions he he kind of underhanded that almost mm-hmm. out there quick um i think there's just a ton to like about cam ward's game uh um, yeah i think I, he's going to he's uh, he, he's going to be pretty highly coveted so it's not to say that this is a going to be an easy uh, portal recruitment to win. Yeah, and you can look at the numbers and let, let me see if I I can I can find some accuracy stuff. Um, but there's a lot of glimpses of what you would see in a Mike Norvell offense. You're seeing a lot of screens. Saw some slot fade. There's a little stop route. Yeah, and I don't think the lack of deep balls was necessarily because they didn't trust him to throw deep balls. I mean, you can see that they, they've got an efficient offense here without mm-hmm. having to throw it. The The quarterback run game is kind of opening up the flats, which is opening up the intermediate passes. It's it's a nice little... Yeah, uh, it's a nice scheme. If you're, if, you're, if you're a talented enough quarterback, you don't necessarily have to always hit that deep ball because you can get things to happen in the short intermediate game, which we kind of saw with Jordan Travis earlier in his career. Man, Although that ball gets on them, yeah, it, it comes out quick. I I don't think I don't think anybody's gonna argue that he doesn't have an arm talent, or or at least they shouldn't. <laughs> so there's some talk that maybe Miami's involved here with him. I would prefer to see him not end up at Miami. Ooh, there it is, the path to the pack. <laughs> oh, unrated. That's Versus how you get it. That's star. how you get my heart. There you go. To your starter at, at Incarnate Ward. Well, thanks, Fox C- CFB, for, for giving us this little. Yep, yeah, yours, Fox. <laughs> 12 of 13 for 213 yards and two touchdowns. Yikes. That's how you get your butt kicked. Yeah, that'll A lot do. of RPO stuff. Um, he throws so. that ball well. Yeah, I wonder if he played baseball. Yeah, he seems like a, a baseball thrower, a there middle infield thrower. Ball's a little bit behind, Pl- but plenty of plenty of plenty of arm here to get the ball vertical. Yeah, I think you would kind of run into potentially some accuracy things, although. Um, see him moving around. It's just he's just a special athlete on top of being a pretty good quarterback. Yeah, I I, th- I think this this kid's kind of a, a can't can't miss. He's been developed well. You can see it. Um, whoop. Good footwork. Keeps his eyes and his shoulders downfield. Yeah, 
Yeah. So here's a here's a scatter shot mm. chart um, that I have. So you can see on on one axis we have an accuracy rate. So that's percentage of throws that were deemed inaccurate by PFF. This is air yards per attempt. So you can see there's a a, a pretty decent correlation. The more you try to push the ball downfield, the higher your air yards per attempt. Mm the more likely you are to be inaccurate, right? So this mm -hmm. is someone who pushes a ball ball downfield a lot. Someone who throws a lot of screens. So you can see Cam Ward is, is actually is fairly accurate, but they didn't ask a lot of them. So right. um, it's kind of hard to know how much that trans translates. You see in this film, there's just a lot of open receivers. Um, so they were able to kind of get him some easy throws and, and he succeeded doing that. Um, one of the more accurate, quarterbacks in the country just in terms of that uh but you know again i think there's a limitation with it with that stat right now well i've been pretty impressed so far yeah there's a, there's a vertical ball another good one why was that not the tape that was the first play oh okay what? <laughs> or the first pass they're, they're oh, I wasn't, highlights i was looking at i was looking his numbers up sorry <laughs> it's all good yeah, so I think this is, I mean, this is this is something that's reminiscent of uh, what they asked Jordan Travis to do a lot mm -hmm. of, you know, little sit routes, find the gap in zone coverage. That's that's a staple of kind of what Mike Norvell does. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know how much more we need to, to watch of him because I, I, mean, I just, I think he's a, he's. Yeah, he's a good as, player. As close of a Jordan Travis replacement as you're, you're yeah. going to be able to find. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. Um. Yeah. So if that's where you're trying to go with the offense, if that's how you're trying to build the offense, I, I think it makes sense. And you can sit there and you can show them like, hey, we just had this guy succeed that, you know, has a lot of similar traits to you mm -hmm. uh, in terms of athletic profile. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I think I think he's a kid that you could slot in and really, really not change much. Um, so. Big DJ. fan of <laughs> Big fan of Cam Ward, um, but yeah. it seems more and more over time like Cam Ward's going to be highly sought after. Maybe there's another guy on the market that you know could also fit this offense pretty well that you could get you know <laughs> without without as much competition, I guess natural nationally. And I think he's also a very very talented player. And this is DJ DJ Uwongale. Um, so tell me, tell me about what you know about DJ. Well, what I know about DJ is what we saw at Clemson. Um, <laughs> watched a little bit of his tape from this year. Um, I think DJ, I, I think DJ fits what Mike's offense wants to be, yeah. um, in some regards. I think DJ can push the ball vertically down the field. I think he's got a good arm to get the ball, uh, a vertically. And then I think the biggest thing is he's going to present or, per, you know, he's going to give you experience. He's played a boatload of games. He's won a ton of, he's won a ton of games. And then the, the final thing is he's just a physical runner. Like he's a young man that's going to be able to go out there and get you tough yards in your run game as a plus one, which is maybe a little bit different from a Cam Ward. Um, but it's important to note too, like, there's quarterbacks out there that are available or have been available that maybe didn't fit the mold because they're looking specifically for a guy that's got like one year left. So yeah. maybe DJ's not as good as as good as some of the guys that are out there um, based on just numbers or based on just people's opinions, whatever. Uh, but he fits a specific mold of what they're looking for. Um, the thing that I would be most excited about with DJ is just his ability to run between the tackles uh, in the quarterback run game. I think that's something they got to get back to trying to to incorporate in the offense, um, unless they're just going to really throw a lot of bodies and uh, a lot of bodies at this offensive line and get this thing really humming. Um, I think you're going to need to get that plus one back involved. I know that they were fearful of doing that with Jordan uh, too much because of the amount of body blows that he took, um, and you know Jordan wasn't the biggest guy, so. They wanted to be careful with, with how much they exposed them to that stuff. And then, you know, ultimately it was a quarterback run that, uh, you know, ended Jordan's uh, career at Florida State in his season this year. But, um, you know, so having that 
would excite me. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you. Both these guys are very, you know, dynamic and DJ's dynamic in a different way. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it's undeniable. DJ's probably got one of the strongest arms in college football. Right. I think you saw him at Clemson where he was in a program in a mm -hmm. system that really didn't benefit his strengths and kind of accentuated his weaknesses. And then he got put in Oregon State where, you know, it was kind of the opposite deal. I, I think Oregon State did a really good job of building an offense that kind of allowed him to do what he does best. So um, I'll kind of show you what I mean through through this film. Um, and it, it's a good offense, but it's not loaded with a lot of talent. Like, it's not a stacked group exactly. Right. So you can see that they want to run the ball often. Um, mm -hmm. This is this is a pretty simple read. You got trips to one side. You're just going to take the backside one on one. Let them kind of get in rhythm. He fights his mechanics so hard. Like that's the thing that, <laughs> that kills me about DJ. Like you watch him. It, it's never the same. The motion is never the same. Like just on that slant, like how rigid he was. Yeah, he's got an arm, but yeah, his his motion, you can tell he knows that this motion is a little long, right? He does Extremely, the yeah. He does the whole <clears throat> you know, where Cam Ward probably played shortstop, this guy probably played right field. Yeah. Um, so there you're in a good position, but um I kind of missed the the pause, so I'm going to try one more time. Um but you can see right off the release he um the ball goes downward right there yep, yep. and just he does, that he does the old just that half second um i mean that that's what you're talking about when it comes to a long motion but he's able to get a, get away with it for the most part because the zip after the release yeah because it's so got to be yeah. so ucla here is is stacking the box in third and two uh, I, I think he I think he fights I think he overthinks his motion though. I think he's thinking about it when he throws a football and it gets him in some trouble sometimes. I think when you can get him set up with a guy like this, yeah, I agree. when he, he's got a window throw and he has no time to think, this is when he's at his yeah, best. I agree. This is what you saw against Florida State, you know, a year ago. Yep. This is a good ball. I mean, you see mm -hmm. the zip. That's a laser beam. It's so casually. Like yeah. Um, so a lot of this offense is kind of built Shanahan like, uh, mm -hmm. so you see some, a lot of zone running, a lot of zone running, a lot of zone running, then, uh, mm -hmm. kind of build off the play action shots. So where Cam Ward was a guy that didn't take too many downfield shots on the season, DJ's the opposite. A majority of his passes were downfield. I, I think they were top, top five in the country in terms of, uh, balls 20 yards downfield or, or longer. But there's um, where the accuracy issues show up because he's not. He's I don't think he's the most athletic when it comes to getting off his spot. Like I think he's a good athlete. He could probably run a great time. Uh, as a runner, I think he can make I think he can do some things in the open field. But it when it comes to him getting off his spot and having to move his feet, I think that that's when he gets unathletic. Yeah, I, I think he's a guy. I mean, it, it's similar to to Tate, right? Mm -hmm. Um, where yeah. you get him off his off his balance and that he's not able to throw off platform. He's not able to throw, you know, with different arm angles. And right. um, that's just a skill that more fluid people like Jordan Travis can do. But mm -hmm. um, I don't want to disparage DJ no. because like, just like Cam Ward or Jordan Travis can get away from pressure with their agility. He, he has something that, you know, a lot of quarterbacks don't have, which is, he can get out of pressure because he's just so big. Yeah, yeah he's a big physical freak. I mean, th that's a throwaway. It's not a completable ball. And just, I think it's a good example of where his accuracy can can sometimes go awry. Right. Yeah. Th there are s accuracy issues with DJ. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I think he's fixed a lot of them. I mean, I I think we're a far cry from the like nine touchdown, ten interception he was at Clemson a couple years ago. But right. Yeah. Here. This is he could be in trouble here, right? So you can see he his feet are getting a little fluttery, mm -hmm. and he steps back, but he's got the arm strength to get that across. It. That's just yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> no, that's enticing in this in this offense. Yeah, he's able to erase some things because of his arm strength. There's a little touch. Yeah, that's a miss. <laughs> I, I mean that's a that's a I think that's a misroute or something here by the receiver. Yeah, he just, yeah, he just got capped. Hand up, yeah. 
Um, you saw a little touch on the ball, though. I haven't seen a lot of that from DJ yet, just on some of the throws they've asked him to make, but you know, it's encouraging. Yeah, I think... Um, yeah, there's touch. That's a good ball. Yeah, that kid's got to keep running. I think he gets held pretty bad here. I don't, know, I, didn't. I don't know. Um, yeah, so you can see kind of how his offense was. They, he's not reading the field like Cam Ward necessarily was. He's just kind of taking his one on ones, taking those shots downfield. But realistically, that's what Mike Norvell's offenses did. You know, right. this this isn't actually uh, DJ right now. So no, I was going to say what happened. Um. So he, he really does fit kind of what yeah. Mike Norvell wants to do. They want to establish their run. They want mm-hmm. to then take some shots over the top. And that that's what he's done best. And he's really thrived in it this this year. Um, man, that motion's so long. But, but the ball yeah, just really, there. It really is. Yeah. Um, it gets him in trouble, though. I mean, from time to time, if... If you notice that the ball's behind, a lot of times it's because his motion is so long. Yeah, and I, I think better better defenses are able to kind of take advantage of that. Um, so that's that's something to watch out for. I mean, mm-hmm. in, in a lot of ways, this is going to sound this is this is going to sound like me being biased, but I, I think he represents kind of the high end of what you would expect out of Tate, where he's a good armed thrower but he's a more of a physical specimen. Um, yeah. But that long motion, both of them have long motions that can get them in trouble. Um, but, you know, uh, let's go back to that good throw. It, this is just, this is what you get out of them. This is, if you can establish a run game, if if you can Correct. dominate the line of scrimmage, mm-hmm. he's going to make those throws yep. that, that win you ball games. Yeah, he, uh, I think it's also important to note, like when we talk about the experience, he's going to get you in the right checks. Yep. Which is another thing that we know is important for Mike Norvell. Like his his offense is check based at the line of scrimmage, and there's a lot of it. And you better understand football and understand the picture in front of you to be able to handle it. And DJ's put a lot. He's got a lot of reps. All right, so there's a little fake off the quarterback run game. Oh, hello. What a completion downfield. Yeah, did he not see him? <laughs> Yeah, he did. So this is another thing you got to worry about him. Is no, that- no, he, he there's no way he saw him. I mean, that kid just what's that kid dropping there for? <laughs> That's actually kind of crazy. That that linebacker. I mean, he he was pretty interception prone at at, at Clemson, and this ball yeah. isn't a mm-hmm. good, well thrown ball. I mean, there's there's a lot of wobble in that spiral. Um, yeah. He gets away with one there. He was a lot better with the football this year, though. So. I was going to say, what were his numbers on the year? So 21 touchdowns, seven interceptions. It's not ridiculous. But he was. Yeah. So, I mean, we see. 7% seen, completion percentage. We see 20, some of the inaccuracy here. This crosser route comes open across the field. He does a good job kind of getting away from pressure, throwing off platform. Could yeah, have been a touchdown. Missed, yeah, just missed it. Another one here where mm. just a little touch there might have been nice. Right. Yeah. I, I think that was more of a touch problem than anything. Yeah, that's pressure. Yeah. He might have just been throwing that one away. So uh, there's a lot to like about DJ. I think he's mm. someone that's going to, where I say that Cam Ward slots in naturally for. Yeah. Yeah, he's got it. He's got a cannon when he can step into it. Um, but here you see the ball uh, down. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, not, no bueno. I think Cam Ward is a quarterback that can go win you football games. I think DJ is yes. a quarterback that's that you, you're, you're, you're not, he's not going to go lose you a lot of football games. He's going to keep you in it. He's going to keep you competitive. He's going to run that offense well. Yep. I think Cam Ward's like that, maybe that a step above that a guy that you can ask to go out there and just take a game over from the quarterback position like they've done with Jordan Travis in the past. What is going on here? Oh, they just have <laughs> number 99 as their fullback. I'm like, did they release a lineman downfield? What's going on? <laughs> um, Might as well have. Yeah, this is this is some uh, just old school offense right here. 
Yeah, it really is. Um, but yeah, yeah, you see that. Oh, uh, got it killed here. Yeah. There's there's not much you can do there. But I think it's a testament to DJ's ability. Like, this isn't a great Oregon State team. They were ranked. But it's not. It's not a special, a special group. Like, they're good. They're not great. There's not yeah. a. There's not a boatload of NFL talent walking around out there like he would come to Florida State and have. Like, but I think it's a testament to say that he went and was very had a successful season there, led them to being ranked and and winning a lot of football games. Like, that's kind of who he is. He's a winner. There you go. This is this is what you need out of DJ. Yeah. You need when he has that clean pocket for him to be able to step up and buy just enough time for a guy to break open downfield. Yep. Beautiful pass. Like we're in the third quarter. He's nine is nine is sixteen and 163 yards. Yeah, I mean, I think that's and then they they schemed a deep shot up and he threw for a touchdown. Like that screams Mike Norvell offense. Yep. But then those balls right there. Don't let's scream. Oh shit. Oh, <laughs> oh my Lanta. Oh, you can see he's trying to be those, those screams something entirely different. Yeah, he got he got away with another one there. Um yeah, so throwing off platform really isn't a strength. Um he he tried to make it a strength on that pass. Um <laughs> Yeah, I, I think a, a more in-depth statistical deep dive w- will be worthwhile uh, if DJ is FSU's quarterback going into next year. Mm-hmm. I, I, there's a lot to like. He's got a strong arm. He's got a big frame. If you can use him, like, here, great throw. Guy come open late, over the middle of the field, gets it to him on a dime. It's a great throw. Um, yeah. So so he can make the good throws. I think he's more of a natural slot in for like what Mike Norvell's offense was. At Memphis, um, mm-hmm. where Cam Ward is someone more like, you know, what you've had at with Jordan Travis. So, right. Um, right. This is this is what he's got to do, though. This is yep. when he becomes a next level type of player. Yeah, you got to use him as as a physical player, mm-hmm. as a downhill passer, and in in a runner. Yep. They were ready for it that time, but um, that that is kind of what he was missing. At Oregon State, I think. Um, yeah, you saw a lot of it at Clemson. You did, and he kind of ate FSU up. There you go. But yeah, he second and sixteen, just a nice little, nice little in route, and little yep. bang eight, and bam, on you. Yeah, when when he has time to step up into the pocket, uh, he, he he delivers good balls. Yeah, I mean, we, I think we can be honest and say that there were some limitations to the Florida State passing game because Jordan lacked some of those throws in his arm. And a player like DJ, it's oh, it's not crazy to think that maybe the passing game gets a little bit better because you unlock some th- parts of your playbook. Yeah, I, I think I think he's just a, a guy that you can trust to make the throws and and push the ball downfield and uh, offensive line not winning there. Uh, no, but a, a nice physical run on first down, like they, they missed that some. Yeah. And there. Yeah. I mean, this is this is what you're that we're yeah. missing with, with two, the two two guys holding, holding on the backside and right. Opens that lane up. Um ten year run. Nine year run. So I yeah, I, I think there's some real limitations with kind of where DJ is and who DJ is. Um I think there's really been two kind of camps that have talked about him. He's either the guy that put up monstrous numbers in the Pac-12 mm-hmm. this year and, and kind of looked like a completely different player, or he's that bum that was at Clemson that couldn't get anything done. I think the truth is somewhere in between. Um, I think he's a guy that kind of fits what Mike Norvell's wanting to do. He fit what they wanted to do at Oregon State. He helped them have a productive offense. They have a lot of stats. He has a he has a pretty good passer rating from, from this past year that like the pro DJ people are going to kind of lean on. And I think that's a testament to kind of, you know, how he's developed as a player. Maybe he can take another step. Um, you can see with Jordan Travis that the staff kind of put an emphasis on 
being able to throw off platform, being a little bit more dynamic with, mm -hmm. with your throws. And maybe that's something they can work on with him and kind of get him to that next level where, you know, I think he was a good player that elevated that Oregon state offense. Yeah. yeah. But can he be better than that for Florida state or, um, can you trust him to be that good player now that he's going to be playing in the ACC, which I think honestly is, is a harder conference to get through than the Pac-12. So Agreed. Um, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of nuance with DJ. I, I think that he's someone that is that fits the mold of what you're trying to do this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're in a rebuild year, uh, or maybe I should call it uh, define it as a retool year. You know, you're graduating a lot of talent at a lot of different spots, a lot of NFL guys. You're putting a big focus on your, um, you know, building around your, your Brock Lynn and, and Luke Krimenhawk and see what what Tate's role kind of is on this roster moving forward. Um, you know, you got to think that if a, a DJ or a Cam Ward came in, Luke might look to get an opportunity to go play. Or, I'm, I'm sorry, Tate might look to go get an opportunity to play somewhere else right away. Um, and I wouldn't blame him for that. Um, but yeah. You've got some skill talent coming back, but it's all, it's all going to be young. Um, you know, defense that you're rebuilding from the from the bottom up, uh, with a lot of guys leaving along your front seven and on the back end. So, I, I think, you know, DJ makes a lot of sense as a guy that could come in and maybe stabilize you for a year, or Cam Ward also can come in and stabilize you for a year as you, you know, look to kind of transition from where you were in 23 and then into 20, well, I guess it would be the 2025 20, season. So I'm curious to see which one of these guys they land. I think both make a lot of sense. Um, I think the important part is that you're getting, you're getting Brock and Luke developed and ready to run uh, for that, for that next real push. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm more excited about the Cam Ward name. It's a fresh name. It's someone that FSU fans don't have a lot of, experience with he's someone yeah. who's a little bit more electric like you said i think he's someone that can win you ball games um but you know i i gotta be honest as someone who was a tate someone who was advocating for tate to be kind of your bridge quarterback you know dj represents kind of if you gave tate a bunch of experience and a little bit more physical tools and you know if he's kind of he is that quarterback that can stabilize you for a year that that whole yeah probably can get you 10 wins and yeah, yeah. give you a chance at the ACC title, which is, I think, you know, it's gotta be your goals. That's, that's yeah. your goal next year. And yeah. and you gotta, you know, you need to beat your rivals. You need to at right. least be in the picture for the ACC championship in this rebuilding year. Yeah. I think he does that for you. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I think he's less of a flashy name, less of a flashy pickup, but you know, he's someone that I think could pick up this offense pretty quickly. Um, so you. yeah, both names are exciting. I think FSU um, is going to clean up in the transfer portal. They have every previous season, and it starts with quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any closing thoughts here? Yeah, I do. Um, if you like quarterbacks, uh, you, you probably will like the battle's end. So I would welcome everybody. They recently uh, surpassed 3,500 members uh, uh, over over the last couple of days since the snub. Um, we I heard somebody else call it that. I think that that's a great, great way, a uh, great moniker for for what that was. That was a snub. So I would welcome everybody. I, I wouldn't welcome everybody. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask everybody to please take a take a moment, get over to the Battles End and see what they're doing. It's the Battles um, See what's going on over there. Like I said, 3,500 other Knowles have joined. It, it's just important. It's time. It's time to get involved uh, as a Florida State fan. And then beyond that, Knowles 24/7. Uh, get over there. Like I said earlier, that I think I believe it's sixty percent off uh, deal going right now. Now's the time to get in there for Christmas. It's it's official visit season. It's portal season. There is a whole hell of, hell of a lot of information being passed around. And at the end, make sure you're subscribed to us here at X's and Knowles, the Knowles twenty four seven YouTube channel, and throw the video a like. Drop a message in the comment that tell us which of these two quarterbacks you like and what you like about them. Maybe what you don't like about them. And that's just going to help us get out to uh, get out and recognized by for other Knowles to find us. Um, so if you can do that, it'd be greatly appreciated. And with that, keep chopping.